Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining as you're coming in. We're just going to um, wait a few minutes. We're a little bit early, but we thought we'd start letting people in so you guys can get settled, check your audio, get your LinkedIn account up and ready to go. Um, so we'll keep checking in. But in the chat box, let us know where you're from. Where are you visiting from today? Okay. Phoenix, Arizona. Leo Valeria. Hello. Okay, we got Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. How do you pronounce your name? Is it Notica? All right. Uh, Leslie, I wonder, as new people come in, can they see your original message about the LinkedIn that they should have it pulled up? Mm, okay. Yeah, for those of you just joining, make sure you pull up your LinkedIn profile and get ready to go. You're going to be taking some action with this. You're not just going to get the information, you're actually going to apply it. Hey, everybody, as you're coming in and getting settled, um, just uh, drop in the chat where you're from. We want to know where you are joining us from today. It's always fun, I think, to, uh, you know, to see where everybody in NSHSS is located. Welcome from Oahu. That's exciting. <laughs> okay, I have to respond to that because I'm in Maryland too, <laughs> Montgomery, College, uh, Montgomery County. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to say the BC area so I can be like, hey, me too. <laughs> Welcome, Brianna. Okay, Texas. I got some friends over there. Texas. Uh, yeah, I lived in Texas for a time. I went to school at Texas Tech University for a little while during my undergraduate before I moved to Atlanta. Okay, Hanford County. Uh, NYC, all right. I'm going there um, in June. First time in forever. <laughs> okay, New Jersey. Oh, everybody from um, NYC, you guys should check out. We're having one of our um, member events at Columbia 
in October. So check that out on the Ooh. events page. Look at that, all these connections. This is why we should start leveraging LinkedIn right now. Exactly. <laughs> okay, Michigan. Arizona, hello, Miami. Congratulations. Mm. Sultana, so you just graduated, so this is the perfect time for you to leverage your LinkedIn profile. Yeah. You gotta tap into that. <laughs> Manitoba. Ooh, look at that connection. That's wonderful. Yay. Yeah. You ooh, there is <laughs> yeah, you both of you guys definitely connect on LinkedIn. There's a nice tool called the alumni tool. It's very, very efficient. That's fantastic. No. All right. Yeah, for those who are interested in the member event, I'll post some more information about events at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we are always happy to connect people. Yeah. Again, we're just waiting for a few more people to join and then we'll get started. But if you just came in, uh, drop it in the chat, let us know where you're joining us from. Uh, make sure you have your LinkedIn account up and ready to go. This is an interactive workshop. So you will be uh, building different areas of your LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. yeah. And feel free to turn on your camera too. I wanna see your lovely faces. It's LinkedIn after all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Valeria, let's go. Yeah, yes. you can participate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yes, yes you can. Yeah. <laughs> There's no limit. Awesome. Well, I know we have a lot of information to get through tonight, so we'll go ahead and get started with introductions. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Leslie Walton. I'm the Member Engagement Manager for NSHSS, uh, and I am very, very excited to introduce to you one of our fellows. Um, her name is Anne Marcel Kuame, and she is joining us tonight to lead this workshop. Um, she is a certified UMAP coach, storytelling strategist, and the creator of Silk Road Journey. It's a personal story lab that's going to help you unlock your ultimate potential, you know, find the best way to tell your story and find your strengths and values that work for you to learn how to brand yourself through your LinkedIn profile and make those connections that are so important. I think mm -hmm. one of the most interesting things for me that I found out about MRSL is that she spent a year in China. So that's pretty exciting. So you have a lot of experience to share with us. And so, yeah, and Marcel, would you like to introduce yourself and take over? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that lovely intro. I can't beat that, right? <laughs> so yeah, as Leslie said, my name is Anne Marcel and um, it's actually a French name. So it's a compound first name, I have two. You bring them together, it makes it one. As she said, I grew up between my, um, Cote d'Ivoire where I was born and I came to the US when I was 11 and then I lived in China. So all of that, I'm a combination of all of those things among many other things. So one of the things I like to do is listen to people's stories because I like to help people connect with one another and see how they can leverage their story to really unlock opportunities, including LinkedIn, which is what we're here for today, right? Okay, so that said, let's get it. Let's get started. Okay. Yeah, so what is the purpose of LinkedIn? People talk about LinkedIn this, LinkedIn that. Like, so what? Why does it matter? The floor is yours too, by the way, before we go into these. But like, um, let's have them guess first. What else? Besides building your professional network, searching for and finding career opportunities and job openings. Any guesses? Why does it matter? Get to know people with um the same profession. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's right. Anyone else? Mm 
Give it one more try. Okay, staying connected with people you may have met in the past. Yes, exactly. It's a great one. So, okay, Leslie, can you um, reveal? Yes, okay. So, yeah, you want to enhance your, prof uh, your professional brand, your reputation online. You want to find and learn more opportunities about companies. And then you want to learn professional skills because there's a way to get certification online for LinkedIn. And then finally, the big reveal. Yeah, you want to connect with recruiters, hiring managers and professional and build your professional network along the, uh, along the way. Okay, next up. So what do you guys think are the top two LinkedIn users? Any guesses? You'd be surprised. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not bad. Okay, famous people. Okay, anyone else? So that, ooh, I like that. Okay, Sultana. Okay, can you reveal the uh, the answers? Okay, we recruiters, you know, looking for talents like you to fill in jobs. And then second, sales professional, looking to sell products to people like you. Makes sense, right? So that being said, um, next up. So th this is just some fun fact about LinkedIn. You can just reveal all of it. Yeah, so LinkedIn is a popular tool. Can you imagine that? Over seven, uh, 700 million users like worldwide, right? 90% of recruiters use LinkedIn to find candidates. 93% of hiring managers will look at your social media profile before an interview. So you want to take ownership of that brand because it's out there, whether you want it or not. So it's up to you to take control over it. And then there are about um, 55 job applications submitted every second, y'all, every second. And then 24% of millennials age 18 to 24 use LinkedIn. So people like you guys are out there really leveraging the tool. And another fun fact that I found is that uh, the most um, soft skills that is out there on LinkedIn is creativity. With the hard skill um, being cloud computing. Creativity is what we're here today to leverage to make that LinkedIn profile pop. How cool is that? Okay, so next up. Here's some profile examples. Now... I'm gonna ask you guys to participate. So what do you guys think about this example? What make this pro profile work or not? Um, one of them is definitely like short information. One is more lengthy. Okay. What do we, what do we think about um, the, the, the different graphics going on? I see the join the pod thing and I'm kind of confused. Okay, okay. Okay, shows personality, okay. Yeah, the joining the pod is part of it. And then as you read, you get to understand what it means. Okay, what else? What about the profile picture? Okay, emojis are being used, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really popular. Let me open the chat and make it bigger so I can see what you guys are saying. Okay. What do we think um, about the, um, the about section? Somebody, okay. The profile picture look professional, but obviously not a headshot. Okay. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. There's a clear shot of the person in the profile and they're only, okay. Yeah. So guys, guess what, right? So sometimes we're taught that you got to put a professional pictures out there, but it's not always the case. What's most important, especially for your brand, is to show your personality. So if you don't want to go into an industry that prioritizes, that doesn't prioritize the suit and tie, well, you don't have to have a profile picture that prioritizes that. So it's okay to be personable. Like Joseph is into like um, computer engineering. So he's got the hoodie on. That's his personality. Okay. Yeah, the bio gives them a lot of information, right? Yeah, we're gonna like see how that works out. So can we have the next slide up? Okay, so another thing about LinkedIn, right? How you can leverage it is to use job scan. So obviously on the previous slide, we saw a bunch of information, but what do we know? Like, how do we know what information to put out there and like what keywords? So job scan is here to help you. 
it's a website that you can put your resume next to it or your LinkedIn profile and look at a specific job that you're targeting and then compare. So jobs can give you the keyword that might be missing for that industry that you want to go into. And it helps you in terms of ranking your profile to, to have your profile show for recruiters. So it's called uh, SEO, search engine optimization. So overall, JobScan is a great tool that you can use tying into LinkedIn so that you can make your profile more visible. Um, okay, we have the next slide up. Okay, here's other examples, right? So these are headline photos and banners. So when you look at those two, what's the distinction here? What do we notice right away? One's a lot more colorful. Yeah. And what are your eyes drawn to first? The more colorful one. Yeah, exactly. So LinkedIn profile, there's a lot of things that goes into it. It's not just your name, what you put on under there, it's how you leverage different aspects. So the section that you say is, uh, is colorful is the banner section. So how can you leverage that besides leaving it empty like the person on the right? What can you put in the banner section? Okay, making it personal to you, that's right. So yeah, Vivian on the left, she got the Gen Z protagonist, entrepreneur, creator, and speaker. So right there, it tells you what she's about, right? You can add words, okay, that describe you and make it colorful. Yes, exactly, because you want to draw people's eye to you directly, right then and there. So every aspect of LinkedIn is yours to leverage and make it about your brand, okay? Now, um, next slide, please. Okay, now... We're going to do an activity, okay? This is going to be fun. So based on what you've seen so far, you're going to update or tweak your, you can um, upload your profile photo, tweak your headline or banner. We're going to, oh, questions. Uh, someone dropped it in the chat. Okay. So yeah, we have about like five minutes. Let's do that. And then we can, we can um, pick on somebody to share. Okay. Let's do this. Oh, and of course, the pro tip, you know, how you help people plus your job title is the ultimate headline. So keep it simple. If you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to drop in the chat, okay? I'm also, I'm sorry, they want to see your headline as an example. Oh, I think you're muted. <laughs> I'm dropping in the chat. Ta-da. And feel free to share what you think, you know, any way it can be improved. I love to hear about it, you know, nobody's perfect. <laughs> uh, with the time that we have, I wonder if it would be helpful to also maybe share my profile on the screen, maybe towards the end. Yeah, absolutely.
Two more minutes. Uh, Leslie, yeah, you can share my profile and then I'll explain uh, a bit what's your journey. But I have some information about that towards the end, okay? All right, I got your question. Uh, also, this is a good segue to have somebody else drop their LinkedIn and then we can share it on the screen. Oh, Leslie, are you sharing your screen or am I sharing my screen? Okay. Okay. All right, Valeria, thank you for sharing. Okay, so this is my LinkedIn profile, right? So I'm a certified human coach as Leslie introduced me as. So that's what I uh, do for people. The cultural facilitator is a combination of where I've, I've lived and how I like to help people. And then I like learning and development, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm all about diversity, but diversity, equity, and allyship. And in a nutshell, I'm, I am on a mission to connect the world through storytelling because I help to like I like to help you guys share your story. Now I know somebody asked, so called journey is the hashtag strategic. So on LinkedIn, under my post, everything I post has that hashtag on there. And because I created Soko Journey, I made that into a hashtag. So that's kind of my approach to it. But I'm going to share more about that towards the end. I want to make this about you guys. So can we have, um, oh, okay. All right. So here's my, can we have Valeria's um, LinkedIn up, please? Yeah, the very first one. Oh, guys, I really, you guys nailed on something here that I was going to chat about. Your LinkedIn URL is your full name. I love that. You guys are spot on. This is great. Way ahead of the game. Okay. Okay. All right. So for Valeria, we have uh, Warner Brothers. Okay. I'm assuming that's, so Warner Brothers College Ambassador. So does that have to do with the actual company? Yes, I currently work for their okay, company. Okay. Okay. Good. I like that. Okay. President of the Association of Filmmakers at uh, ASU, majoring in management in film and media production. Okay. Yeah. I like it. So I guess now, um, one of my suggestions would be to make it clear using all of those experiences that you, have, that you have acquired, what can you do for people, right? Because you work at all these places, you're majoring in management and film, then to do what, right? I mean, I can assume you want to go into film, but like make it clear so that people won't guess for you or decide for you. Does that make sense? Okay. And the LinkedIn, I like your LinkedIn, but it's very colorful. I love it. If you could have some wording on there to kind of connect what is it that you bring to the table and that photo, that'd be dope, okay? All right, we'll take one more and then for anybody else who needs feedback, we'll do that towards the end, okay? Um, can we have um, um, Brian's up, please? Yes, okay. Okay, hi, Brian. Okay, first of all, your picture, great, love it. Um, so as we talked about, right, the banner, it will be so much more eye-catching if you put a banner up, if, if something that's meaningful to you. 
and adding a little wording. And then student at New Jersey Institute of Technology. So this is very common, you know, everybody's a student says student, but then everybody's a student. So what makes you different, right? What is it that you do that others need the most? What is it that you're passionate about? What industry do you want to go to? So those little nuggets really are important for your uh, headline, okay? So I'm going to wrap this up for now and then we're going to move on. But we, I'm definitely open to give more feedback later, okay? All right. So next up. Okay, so we looked at the headline and batter. Now we're getting to the meat of LinkedIn, right? The about me section. This is so crucial. This is like a, a summary that should be dynamic and engaging. Use first person. So you got to keep this piece conversational and include, include the human element and because you want to connect with real people. So the summary is the place where you tell your connection three things, who you are, what skills and experiences that you have, and why you'll be a valuable connection. And you can keep this under two to three paragraphs, okay? And make it like a, make it narrate like a story, not necessarily like a resume. And this example right here is actually a member of uh, the NHHS fellow group. As you can see, we have one mutual group in common and you see here how, how we have Leslie in common, right? So all those connections show up on your LinkedIn. So using this example, we're gonna do actually an activity that you guys can tweak your about me section a little bit. So use I, make it personable and share your skills and like why should people connect with you, okay? This is basically a summary of what I just said, right? Um, the, uh, use I, use a hook, show your values with people, include some of the SEO elements that we talked about, depending on the industry you wanna go into, if you know. And a, a call to action may look like a question at the end, an email, or simply drop in your Calendly link. And yeah, be human, you know? Okay, so five minutes for this exercise. I think that's the next slide. Yeah, exactly, okay. And I take it you guys don't want to see my about section. Should we pull that up again? Uh, okay, Valeria said yes, thank you. <laughs> see, that's why it's so helpful. To oh, Ellie, thank you. I see a thumbs up, love it. Okay, all righty. Now, for those who feel confident already about the about section already, feel free to drop it in the chat for me to sort of anticipate so I can pull it up. Okay, so this is more. <laughs> feel free to read it and get some inspiration. If you have any question as you read this or as you try to craft yours, please don't hesitate to ask. Oh, and fun fact, the character limit for the about section is 2,700 uh, characters, including spaces. So you want to be succinct, yet punchy, and true to the point. It's a challenge, I know, but. There's something that sticks out about my about me. I wonder if you guys can catch it. It's towards the end. <laughs> it's something I didn't do. How about that? I'll say it like that. <laughs> so.
two more minutes, and then we share. Uh, could you scroll up really quickly? Sure. Like to the very top. I love it. it sounds a bit like poetry. Oh, thank you. I try. I don't do poetry well, but I try. <laughs> and I ask for help, okay? So it's okay to ask for help. <laughs> okay, we're going to share in a minute. So feel free to drop a link. Um, so Deborah, since we didn't go over yours last time, I, would you be comfortable if we share yours? Yeah, that's me? not a problem. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, okay, cool. So let's scroll back down towards the end. I want to see if you guys caught what I didn't do. What do you guys notice about how I ended my about me section? Anything? Remember the tips? No? Going once? Going. Ah, there you go. Yes, David. That's right. I didn't include a call to action. Good. So you see, I'm very familiar with LinkedIn, but I can also fall into that trap, right? It's kind of like when you like finish writing a cover letter and then you don't ask for the interview. Yeah, that happened. So even for me, right? So yeah, a call to action, something as simple as dropping my email or putting my calendar. Hey, let's talk. That's it. That's all we need. Thank you. Thank you, David. So yeah, I got to go back and fix that. Now let's look at um, on Deborah's LinkedIn. The about me section. Okay, beautiful profile picture i think you're smiling gorgeous oh yes that banner look at that so colorful okay so okay so this is typical for student um so incoming freshman at the university of north carolina at charlotte as pre-public health and spanish double major i have experience in leadership advocacy for adolescent healthcare, public speaking and event coordination i'm extremely passionate about healthcare, adolescents right women's reproductive right entrepreneurship and nonprofit organization Thank you for reading my profile. Looking forward to connecting with you soon. That ending was sort of a call to action, but putting a question mark to it would be like a kicker. Now, that said, right, what's missing, of course, is that storytelling, right? Like, how do you come to loving all of these things, right? Obviously, you had the life before you went to college. Tell me about that. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. Right, and putting, there's definitely, again, 2,700 characters. It's short, but there's a lot of room to add more stuff about you, right? When I read this, I want to see Deborah in my face. I, I want to feel like your passion based on the stories that happened before. Um, is that, yeah, anybody else want to like share like a feedback that they have based on the profile? If not, it's okay. No pressure. Wait, once. What? Okay, we're ready to move on. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, so next up, we're gonna talk about the experience section of LinkedIn, right? The one that behaves like the resume, but it's not quite the same thing. So, um, so the experience, oh, excuse me. The experience section of LinkedIn. So LinkedIn overall works like your live, um, CV in a way. So it's a place where you can aggregate everything that you've learned so far and just be confident about it, but also adding more words. Because the resume, there's only so long. Some people say, oh, keep it to one page, but with the lengthy, you can spice things up. So what do we notice about um, the screenshot on the right? 
about the element that goes into the experience section. I know it's right there, but I want to hear from you guys. What, what do you see? I noticed that it's not just like in a resume where it's like the bullet points of what you're doing. Uh, it's also yeah. like kind of like what you got out of it or like what mm -hmm. it meant to you. Yeah, exactly. What else? What else is there that we don't see in the resume? Something else like um, adding links to like external sources or mm -hmm. like work that you did. Yeah, exactly. To show proof. Because you can say you did things all day, but like, where's the receipt at? Right? It's so important to kind of capture that. It's called documentation. So if you have the link out there of a blog you wrote, throw it up there under the experience, right? So a good experience session on LinkedIn requires a title, something that must be like recognizable and legible. The dates, you can just keep it to the year, it's fine. And then the description, right? In the description, you gotta be strategic because again, keywords, right? If you liaise, right? If you did great time management, show that. And then who did you work with? Did you work in a team? Did you work by yourself? What did you take on? What was the impact? All of that, right? Uh, how, to, how do you quantify it? Numbers are always like, we're always drawn to that. If we see numbers like, oh, percentage, boom. Our eyes goes to that right away. So like numbers, how do you quantify your impact is very, very important. And now sometimes not every company would have a logo. It's pretty rare, but if you the more the company has a logo, the more recognizable it is, the better. Okay. All right. Um, next slide. Okay. So another activity. We're going to update this. I know this is hands on, y'all. We're now just going to take the information and just call it a day. We're going to take action right now. And then we're gonna get feedback. <laughs> okay, so after your experience session, and I'm gonna go to mine. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, full disclaimer, I also need to update my experience session. So I'm right there with y'all, okay? So yeah, if you can pull up my LinkedIn, gonna dissect it for a little bit. And then again, if you want to, did anybody else want the LinkedIn? Um, do, does anybody else want feedback? So I know some of these things can make you vulnerable. I get it because you, you want it to be perfect and whatnot, but this is the time where we can really get those feedback to like make our LinkedIn pop. So don't be afraid, okay? Um, let's take about like four minutes so that we have time for questions towards the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, so should your experience section just include jobs or should you include internship organizations um, that you involve in? Great question. So, okay, so we're gonna get Tyler feedback and that. Uh, how do you pronounce your first name? I don't wanna butcher it. Taina? Taina? I get that right? Please let me know. Yes, no? Oh, Tania. It's Tania. Tania, okay, thank you. Uh, so your experience section includes anything that you're putting the work for. That's how I say that. Because sometimes we tend to underestimate our experience when it comes to certain things like internship or like volunteer. And by the way, there's a section for LinkedIn to put in the volunteer work and you can fill that up too. But don't like kind of hold back just because it was an internship or like a side job. It matters because you contributed value and you put in the work. That's what the experience session is for. Does that answer your question, Ellie? I think so, yes. Okay, all right. If anything else comes up, uh, let me know. So as you can see, my experience section, this is the most recent program that I'm in is Praxis. So it's developing, right? So when that happens, sometimes it can be difficult to kind of gauge, okay, what is my impact? What exactly is going on? But nonetheless, that needs to be filled in. And if we go a little bit downwards, my previous experience, yeah, I keep going. Yes, so this right here, Flick Ambassador, that wasn't a job per se, but it's something that I contributed value to, right? I got mentors there, I leveraged the platform to learn, and then I wrote a blog for them. So boom, I attached the link right there and there. 
Now, as I said, this is not about me. So let's look at uh, Tyler's profile. Okay, I like the personalized URL, nice. I wonder, does the number 2023 is personal to you? Uh, that's my graduation uh, year from high school. So. Yeah, see guys, this is another hack. So sometimes your name can be like common out there. In that case, you can mix it up with some numbers that is meaningful to you to make it your personal URL. So it's also a good idea. Um, okay. Okay, uh, let's go to the, okay, first of all, nice profile picture, nice uh, header, um, banner, love it. Okay, I see both work at national, okay. If we keep going down, down. Okay, right there, see. So the STEM and um, Bud's chapter head, I love it, right? Um, so you're describing the opportunity. What's missing is your contribution. But then I like the link here. Um, is it a link to like, what is the link about? Can you tell me more about that? Yes, so the link is to the homepage of STEM and Buds itself. And through there, uh -huh. you can see the chapters. And uh -huh. under the chapters, you can see the one that I'm uh, co-spearheading with another uh, student. So uh -huh. that there shows all the credibility about uh, what I'm doing in our chapter. But I do agree, I do need to add in uh, my contribution in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's what I was getting at. Good, good. Yeah, definitely do that. And let's see here. Student vice president. Okay. Yeah. And if, like, like I said, if you have any receipt that shows graphic visual of your contribution, throw it out there. This is like a living document of your track, like your value. And this is going to follow you as you go and look for work. Okay. Okay. Uh, one more person. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the profile picture, if it can be closer, that would be great. So that we kind of like see your face more. Um, we can scroll down a bit. Let's see. Ooh, okay. I love this. So I, I like this example here. So we see how like uh, for Achieve Miami, so what I love about LinkedIn is when you add more experience under the same umbrella of the company, it does this uh, sort of timeline, right? So we can see a certain continuation and this shows consistency, right? It would be great, of course, if we can add uh, like a proof, like a blog or some graphic there or something as easy. You can um, like whip up Canva and just put something together very quickly. Like it makes such a huge difference, right? So that would be like sort of my advice to improve uh, the experience session. Does that make sense? Was this helpful? Can you yeah. Yes. Can you include pictures, like pictures of you, like being in action for that opportunity, right? Is that what you meant? Pic oh. we pictures of me being interactive with the children, I meant to say. Yes. Brilliant. Yeah. Picture is another one. Mm -hmm. Definitely add that. Yep. Um, okay, so I'm going to leave the other two profile towards the end, okay? I want to make sure we cover some stuff and, like, I answer some of your questions. Okay, so next slide. Um, I think next we have the interest groups. Ah, ah, there we go. Yes, this is now one of my favorite. Yeah. Okay, so recommendations on LinkedIn, right? So this one, so how many of you have asked for a recommendation letter from a teacher or professor? Yeah, okay, yeah, good. Well, guess what? You can do that on LinkedIn too. Like how cool is that? You get to ask them on paper and now they can just whip it up on LinkedIn and it adds up to your credibility. It is worth it because the more stories and example people can share about you, the better because it serves as social proof, right? So imagine you're good at something 
But if nobody can see it and vouch for it, it's like, well, you're the only one saying that. So it doesn't really do well for your credibility, right? And now who can you ask? Coworkers, previous managers, professors, teacher, classmate, anyone that you work with or added value to in a meaningful way. For me, for example, since I'm creating a business, I can ask the people that I work with that I coach clients to, like write me a recommendation, that counts too. Or people that you work with, even your classmates. You work on a project together. If you did something meaningful, hello, get them to write you something. It validates your professional experience. It shows you like skills, offers perspective, and makes your profile more well-rounded. And then once you get a recommendation, well, give one in return. Makes sense, right? So for me, as you can see, these are the people who wrote me like a recommendation and I give two and more to come, okay? Any questions here before we go to the next slide? Oh, can you ask? Yes, absolutely. Great one. Yeah. Your sports, uh, your, co your coaches. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You definitely want to show if you're competitive, you, you want people to vouch for you for it. If you're very disciplined, if you're a hard worker, if you're consistent, heck yeah, please. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I think that's a yes. Thank you. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, next, I think we have interest groups. Yes, okay, another one of my favorite, right? So interest groups exist on LinkedIn. They're actually a great way to build connection easily. So you can search them by name or like browse group recommended to you by LinkedIn algorithm. As you go, you're gonna like start clicking interest and then it shows up for you. So how can you join, right? You can either request to join for a group or you can respond to an invitation if you know somebody that invited you. And fun fact, what do we notice about the screenshot on the left here, the very top one, under your group? What do we notice? Sorry, can you please repeat that? Yeah, so on the screen, on, on the screen, on the right hand side, the screenshot, what do we notice at the very top here? It's also at the bottom too, by the way. That's why I blew it up. The very top of the group, under your group. Yeah, let's see if you can point your arrow to it. That'd be great. Sounds familiar? Or looks familiar? Should I reveal it? Oh, is it too obvious? <laughs> so um, basically, NSHS says, okay, yeah, you can join all this group, but basically what I was trying to point you guys to is that NSHS says it's a group on LinkedIn. So, wait, my mic is not working. Can you guys hear me? I can hear, but like it's a little bit weird. Like it's coming across kind of. Is this better? Kind of uh, yes. Ah, okay. Sorry, I got robotic. Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so NSHS says fellows is a group on LinkedIn that you can join and build connection there. It's easy that way because the people that you're gonna be in the group with share a connection with you. NSHSS, so you can ask to join today. <laughs> Do that right now if you want. Okay, so that's for interests and groups on LinkedIn. Next up, I think we have um, the skills. No, we already talked about that. Okay, so first of all, was there any questions on the interests and groups? Since I, my voice was kind of weird, you might have missed something that I, I said. Hmm? Okay. Um, okay, so next up, so in terms of being open, to opportunities. Okay, yeah, a collegiate council too is on LinkedIn. So um, best practice is to leave your status open candidacy. That way you don't shut yourself like out of any opportunity. Now that said, do you think, should I add, not me, but like, should you add or remove the open to work frame? Why or why not? Let's think about this for a moment. 
So this frame that you see in the picture here. Like why would it be a good idea to leave it up or why would it be a bad idea to leave it up? It would be good to leave it up since it's easier for recruiters to look at um, mm -hmm. as they scroll through all the candidates. It might be applicable mm -hmm. in a search. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's your call to action. Oh, I love that. I didn't think about it like that, but I love that connection. Yeah, it, it serves as your call to action. Okay. Okay, now, um, so for those of you who are looking for work right now, like outside of college, right? So... So this is what I recommend, best practice. Sometimes you might be at a job, at a current job, right? You're working there and you don't always want to, your manager to know that you might be looking for new work. It can be compromising. So best practice is if you see at the bottom left, and let's see if you can point to that, only recruiters. So when you go on your LinkedIn profile, you have the option of saying like only recruiters are open to all your connection. If you keep it to recruiters, only recruiters will see you as like, will see your status as open to work. And better yet, you don't want to put the, um, the frame up if you don't want everybody to know that you're looking for work. So that's kind of this, the distinction here as a best practice. Okay. Is there any question on that? And by the way, this is the last slide. So, ah, we have the checklist too. So, so just to wrap up, right? Um, so the LinkedIn checklist, if you want your profile to be personable, not just professional, like show your personality is okay. If, you're, uh, if you wanna go for the suit and tie, it's fine as well. And does your LinkedIn uh, headline really reflect what you do? Like does it con contain the relevant keyword for your, the industry that you wanna go into? Does your summary section or your about me describes your personal skills and your interests? Does this tell a story? That's the most important thing, right? Can, if I were to open your LinkedIn profile and I look at the first three sentences, do I want to keep reading? That's what you should be thinking about. Uh, does it accurately describe your professional experience, right? And does it at least have two recommendations and 100 LinkedIn connection? So 100 is like a nice sort of target. That way you can um, connect with about a lot of different people. But at least two recommendations makes it so your profile ranks higher. Um, next slide. Questions? Uh, feel free like to unmute and talk. I have some bonus slide too, in case you guys were curious about other LinkedIn feature that you might have heard of. So don't hesitate to ask. There, there's a, like other thing that I didn't cover about LinkedIn. There's so many things about LinkedIn, right? Are you available for contact for email? Ask more questions. Yes, absolutely. So should we go to that slide then, um, Leslie? That last slide that I read for? Okay. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So um, when Leslie introduced me, she mentioned how I'm a certified human coach. I also created Socro Journey, right? Socro Journey is a platform that I created to help students shape their stories into meaningful career opportunities. So that said, I have other, in addition to LinkedIn presentation, I also help people clarify their strength, value, motivated skills, Career interest through a tool called UMAP. It's a self-discovery tool that makes it clear how it is that you behave the way you do and what is it that you do best that others need, right? Your contribution to the world. And I help people craft compelling narrative for college, job interviews, and LinkedIn because it's my favorite tool out there to use for networking. And I also develop cultural intelligence to help equip you for a globalized workforce because we're getting more and more connected. And as you interact with different people, it's important to understand where they're coming from so that you can build better efficient teamwork. And then finally, I also help people find scholarship grants and other fully funded opportunities. Uh, when I got back from China, 
I applied to 32 schools and, uh, and universities. I got them all the fee waived and I got a lot of scholarship to go to school. So I got really good at finding those nuggets out there, the like niche stuff that nobody else is looking at so that I could help myself and get uh, money for school. So I, get, I got really savvy at that very quickly and early on. So if you're curious about that or anything LinkedIn related, if you want a quick review of your profile, free feel it to holla. This is my email, uh, phone number. Also, my, my LinkedIn is open uh, for you guys to reach out to me. Okay. Um, any questions about that or LinkedIn? Anything that I didn't cover that you would like to? Yeah, you're welcome. Absolutely. I love doing this. And I, I really hope it makes a big difference for you guys because LinkedIn is such an amazing tool. It's out there for you. The earlier you start, the better. Because let me tell you, so here's a little hack, right? When you're a student and you still have your .edu email address, it is a golden ticket because people love to help our students. Let me tell you, as soon as they see that email address, they're like, are you a student? We want to help you. Mentors come rushing to you. They really, really want to help. They, they really want to help you. So the earlier you start being on LinkedIn as a student and you really show what you're doing to the world, people and opportunities will ultimately just gravitate towards you. It's simple as that. So definitely you have a lot of things to leverage and I'm here to sort of help you in any way. Yeah, so in the chat, basically a summary of what I talked about. My email, my contact, any questions that come to mind about other LinkedIn features that I might have covered about me? Anything, a comment, feedback, anything, talk to me. I guess I have a question. Yes, who's talking? Uh, okay. In regards to the recommendations, uh, what would be like the best way to, should we approach uh, the people that we work with by email or is it all done mm. through LinkedIn? I'm not really familiar in how the process Good question. Is so, I am biased towards any medium that offers the most authentic way of communicating, meaning voice. So here's something about LinkedIn too. There is a voice message feature on LinkedIn where you can send one minute voice note to people. Leverage that because nobody else uses it. When you're the first person who does it and ask somebody to send them a voice note, once they hear that human voice, they'll remember you for the rest of their life. Trust me on this. There was a time when I was the only person on LinkedIn in my circle who would slide into people's DMs with voice notes. Everybody remembers me for that. So that became my little thing, you know? And hey, think about it. Wasn't there a time where you felt like, man, this would have been so much more easier if I just can like talk this out or like send a note using my voice, right? Email is complicated, trust me. So if you want somebody to actually share a story about you in the recommendation letter, which is recommended, call them. Or you can, I mean, if you like testing, you can say, hey, can I call you? I have something important to ask. Then call them. Leave a voice note. But go for that human element. Trust me on this. People want that. They don't ask for it, but they need it. Okay? Does that answer your question? Thank you. Okay. And I even have a Canva slide deck on how to use the voice note feature on LinkedIn. I'm happy to share that with you, uh, with Leslie as a follow-up for those people who want to like see the deck. Yeah, I have that. It's super easy, but it's such a huge difference. Trust me. Um, how to feel more comfortable opening up and being vulnerable on LinkedIn. I have a hard time sharing my ideas and interests with others. I usually only share surface level stuff. Ah, David, I hear you on this one. Um, so the way I like to answer these kind of things I like to kind of personalize my response. But one thing I'll say, like as a general rule of thumb is, everybody has something that they feel vulnerable about. They don't want to share it. But once you share that human element, everybody resonates with it. And this is an occasion where they're also going to share something vulnerable. And boom, right there, you have a connection that is authentic, that goes beyond surface stuff. But David, I want you to reach out to me. Okay, we definitely need and can talk more in depth about that because I do want to cater to your specific needs. And um, th does that make sense? Did you catch that? This is so hard sometimes. It's like, I don't, okay, we'll do. Thank you. <laughs> I need that feedback. Um, what else is in the chat? Will we have access to the slide presented today? 
what, what was um what's your approach on this leslie i'm actually not sure <laughs> Yes, um, I'm happy to provide that. I'm going to drop my email into the chat as well. Um, just a couple of other things. If you guys are interested in more events like this, we have the Intern Readiness Certificate Program, and then we also have our College and Career Series next week. So I just want to make everyone aware of that, if that applies to you. Um, let me put my email address. You guys can always reach out to me. Again, I'm the Member Engagement Manager. I know I recognize a few names here from working with the leadership groups. Uh, but if you guys have any questions, just let me know, and I'm happy to share the slides. And anything yeah. else, any other resources that Anne Marcel is uh, generous enough to share with us? Yeah, the, the Canva slide deck for sure. I, I, I gotta share that. The voice yeah, note makes such a huge difference. It's such an underrated feature, but it has big time potential. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys aren't familiar with Canva, I absolutely love it. It's a, like Photoshop light, I think would be the way to describe it. And or like, you yeah. know, uh, the illustrator light, like you can design your own stuff. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and then you did say this recording will be available on the past events site, mm -hmm. right? This um, will be up on our past webinars page within the next week or so. And then I think um, Grain, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, has a question. Um, I have another question. Is it OK if I ask that? It's about the yeah, language. Yeah. Please, yes, I love questions. So I've been trying to revise the about me section and I don't know, I find it hard to condense like everything that I've been involved in into like the, the catchphrases because I don't know, I was really involved in disability rights advocacy and I have personal links to that topic. Um, okay. gun violence, I have personal links to that topic. I don't know how I could say that in a way that's candid, but also professional. Okay, I see. Um, so you say you have a link for that, right? So would that, are you thinking about putting those in the experience section? Um, not particularly. I mean, my link to gun violence was that my, I was, I go to Parkland, like Marjorie Storman Douglas, and that's not something that I could really include in experience. Mm -hmm. But is it something to incorporate like a human element? Is it something that I should reveal in about me? And if so, how would I phrase that? Okay, I see. So then that would require me to do a review of your about section. So that's what I would suggest. Oh, what, what happened? Are you still there? Yeah, I am. I just took down my oh. hand. Okay, yeah. Something shifted on my screen, so I didn't know where to kind of look. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so would you be open to me doing a personal review of your LinkedIn? That way it can answer more of your questions. Because on top of my head, I need to see it for me to answer that question. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah, we can definitely wear that in a personal way. That, that, like, it, it can be done. But mm -hmm. I will need to, like, see it and help you sort of, like, storytell it. Okay? okay? Thank you so much. All Should right. I put it in the chat now, or do you want me to email you? Oh, yes, please email me. That would be great. I want to take my time with it, you know? I don't like to do things kind of, like, halfway through. Okay, thank you so much. I like to say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, questions? I'm still here. <laughs> I had a question. Um, I wanted to know, do you host um, other one-on-one -on -one meetings? Because I did um, uh, hear when you said that you were um, also uh, very familiar with uh, a lot of scholarships to help you fund for school. Um, I kind of wanted like, to touch bases with that as well. Can yeah. you, um, should I email you about that? or? Yes, please do. Yes, I do do that. Yeah, scholarship. I, I understand. <laughs> totally understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, scholarship for college, right? Or is it like fellowship? Um, well, for college and also um, I'm going to Spain this summer. So um, maybe I could have some. Yeah, I'm going to do a study abroad in Spain. Um, so I was trying to find some. <laughs> I was trying to find some funds. For yes, that, you're so. speaking to the right person. Let's go. I, am <laughs> I should have put study abroad on the slide, here, but I didn't want to like confuse people. But I stand study abroad. I'm a big fan. I've done it uh, three times. So yes Yay. <laughs> yes there's some like big government name scholarship out there so definitely yo there's money out there okay there is no reason why we should be stressing and not wanting to do things because money this money that your story can unlock any door that's the truth facts i, I put the link to our um scholarship landing page on the nshss website there are scholarships for college students and there are scholarships for study abroad opportunities with our partners as well so you can check out the nshss the society website as well as the nshss foundation hmm. yep. yeah I, I um went through that link but the uh 
scholarships for um, the study abroad didn't open up uh, that as soon as possible. So I was just going to wait on that. But I did apply for one of the scholarships I saw on the website already. So excited okay, to wait for the results. Yeah. And just check back frequently because, you know, as especially with study abroad, as things are changing and opening up again, as COVID restrictions are um, lightening or lessening, uh, those things will change and new programs will be added. So I would just say check back regularly to see what you're um, eligible for. Mm. Yeah, I'm still here, you know, ask away any question. I had some slide that I actually didn't use. So if you guys are curious about adding LinkedIn feature, like the featured section, the um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, where you ask for skills endorsement. There's a whole bunch of stuff about LinkedIn. So shoot. Or if you got to hop off too, it's okay. Okay. Okay, Ellie, thank you for coming. And Marcel, are you getting some questions? Um, no, not like um, publicly. I was responding for uh, to the right message. Okay, uh -huh. that's great. Yeah. Thank you everyone for your time. Yeah. For joining us today. Don't forget to check out the College and Career Series next week. We're looking forward to a different event every day. Bye, Valeria. Thank you. What time is that? Thank you so much. Uh, the, the College and Career Series, you can check it out on um, the NSHSS website under events. Um, they're at different times, but there's one event each night. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, if you have any last minute question, if you want to one on one. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, reach out. <laughs>